Hi everybody, welcome back for another episode here at Blended Graphics. I'm Jason Ortega and for today's video we're going to focus on creating some Photoshop brushes. Now I previously had an episode where we kind of created this multi-purpose brush where we combined both a fur texture as well as a grass texture into one single brush. And this episode specifically we're going to focus on creating five individual brushes that I think all Photoshop users should have and should have in their toolbox. So for all of the brushes that we're actually going to create today, I went ahead and dropped in the links to the images that I'm using. And this way you can go ahead and access those links, get those images, and you can follow along with me as we create these brushes. And in terms of the kinds of brushes that we're actually going to go ahead and create today, we're going to create a cloud, smoke, or dust brush, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of a multi-purpose brush. So we're going to create that. We're going to create a grass brush, a foliage brush, um, and then also we're going to have a texture brush that we're going to use, which is always comes in handy. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and create a rain brush. And we're going to create that one from scratch as well. So definitely a lot in store for you all today. And I think you're really going to like this episode. Let's not waste any more time and let's start creating these brushes. Okay, so for the first brush up on our list today is going to be that cloud brush. So the first thing we need to do is turn on our sky layer. And I want to make a copy of this just so we can have a backup. You can never know if you need one just in case. So we're going to press Command J, turn that bottom one off. And we're going to zoom out a little bit and then Control Command T. Let's scale this up quite a bit. And you can use any of these clouds. Uh, totally up to you. I'm going to focus on this one right up here. So we can hit that little check mark. And you can go ahead and either click on the lasso tool or press L. And what we want to do is just create a selection around this cloud here. So let's go ahead and do that. And once we have this selection, we want to put it on a layer by itself. So let's press Command J. And so now that we have this, let's go ahead and just center it up in our canvas. And now that it's centered, I want to turn on my black background layer that I have here, because this is going to help us out when we create the brush. And the first thing that we need to do to help us out with that selection is create some contrast. So I'm using this levels adjustment layer, clipping it to that cloud image. And let's go ahead and bring in the anchors on both the shadows and the highlights. So that way we can create that contrast and we want to have the most contrast possible. And that's going to help us out in the end result here. All right. So now that we have that, let's click on that cloud layer and we're going to go to our channels. And what we want is we're searching through all these channels and this one's actually pretty good, but we want to find the most amount of contrast. And so that first one's going to be the best one for us. So I was going to select that layer, drag it down to the plus icon to create a copy. And on here we can just start painting black and essentially whatever is going to be white is ultimately is going to be the area that gets selected. So I'm just kind of cleaning this up a little bit and you can play around with the softness of the brush, depending on kind of the the edge of what you're looking for, totally up to you. And so right now I'm just filling this section up here with white because that's the area that I want to keep selected. I want to make sure that it gets selected. So I'm filling all of that in. All right, and this is looking really good. So we can go to that layer, control or command click on that to create a selection of the white. And on that cloud image, we want to go down and create a layer mask so we can isolate that by itself. Perfect. So again, we can kind of clean up some of this area it's completely up to you of how you want to customize this brush. So I'm just taking a second right now, just kind of playing around with the edges here because I just think it might have a little bit more fun texture if it's not just completely uh, soft edge and it has a little bit of variety to it. And so now that we have that, we want to desaturate this. So I'm adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer, clipping it below and completely desaturating this. All right, so let's invert this by pressing Command I and let's turn off that black background and turn on our white because when you create a brush, whatever is black is what's going to be created as the brush. So now that we have this black brush, we're going to go all the way up to the top where it says Edit and we want to go down to where it says Define Brush Preset. And once you click on that, you can give this brush title whatever name that you want it to. And once you have that, just press OK. So to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like, let's turn these layers off, turn on our original layer. And we can add a new one at the top here. And on that layer, make sure that we have a white color and we can just kind of paint. And there we go. We have a cloud brush. Now, I primarily don't typically use a cloud brush for the sake of having a cloud. Um, I primarily use it more for atmospheric effects. 
And I'm going to show you what I mean here in just a second. So let's turn these layers off. We're going to add a new layer at the top of this image. And we're going to turn on this city image, zoom in a little bit. And using our color picker, let's find a nice color, change it up a little bit. And so by doing this, you can kind of see the effect that I'm going for. But the true power lies in those brush properties. So with that said, let's go ahead and adjust a few of those features. We're going to go all the way up to the top of our screen here. And let's click on this brush settings. And the first thing we want to do is increase the spacing just a little bit. And once we have that, let's go to our shape dynamics and we're going to change the size jitter as well as that minimum diameter. From there, we can increase the angle jitter all the way up and then we can go to scattering and let's turn this up just a little bit, not too much. And then lastly, we want to go to transfer and we want to play around with the opacity jitter. Uh, this way it gives it a little bit of variation and it's a really cool effect. So once we have that, we're going to go to the top right corner um, to our hamburger menu up here. And then we want to do new brush preset. And once you have that, go ahead and give it any title. Does it matter? And I'll just have this cloud preset one and hit OK. And then we can go up to our brush settings or sorry, our brushes. And at the very bottom, you can see where we saved that. So now uh, when we start painting again and we can lower the flow all the way down a bit in our opacity. And this is going to give it a nice, cool and subtle hazy effect. Um, and it's really, really awesome. And it comes in handy a lot, at least with a lot of the work that I do. I use a brush like this on so many different levels. So for right now, I'm just kind of taking my time here and even up top here, let's go ahead and fill this in. And what we can do is we can go ahead and turn down the opacity so it's not so prominent. And then let's just check out the before and after of just adding that. Yeah, really cool. And it gives it such an awesome hazy effect. Another cool thing is like on a picture like this, let's scale this up. So like I said, this brush has so many different purposes. So on this, what we can do is kind of create a bit of a dusty and sand effect. And so let's sample one of these brown tones and we can make that just a little bit brighter. And we'll just kind of work on this left side here, just painting a little bit of this in just at a time. And we're not going for any huge changes, just kind of little subtle effects. And as I'm doing this, you can see just how effortlessly it is to apply such a really cool effect. And this brush is just super powerful and one I definitely think everyone should have in their arsenal to use. And we can even add a layer mask, clean up some of these edges here just to dial that back a little bit. And as you see the before and after, just the really neat effect we were able to apply in such a short amount of time. And because you can use this brush in so many different ways, honestly, that's the reason why I think every artist should have one of these in their toolbox. All right, so now that we've completed that brush, let's turn to brush number two, and we're going to create a grass brush. I got pretty lucky finding this image here. All we really need to do is add a levels adjustment layer and clip it to that image. And then we're going to increase the highlights just to make sure that that background color is completely white. From here, let's go ahead and click on that image, add a layer mask. And I'm going to touch up some of this area here and get rid of the parts that I don't want, like this area here. And then even all the way on the right side, I can touch up some of this and get rid of that. Perfect. So now that we have that, all we have to do is just make sure that it's completely desaturated. So let's add a human saturation adjustment layer on top, desaturate this, and then we want to go up to edit down to define brush preset and go ahead and give it whatever name that you want. And once we do this, I'm going to show you pretty much an example of where we can apply a brush like this. So I've got a really nice background image to use here and a 3D rock. And essentially, we just want to blend this rock in with our surroundings. So what we need to do is add a layer mask onto that rock. And using the brush that we just created, we're going to paint black on the bottom there. And as we do this, because our brush matches very well with the grass that's currently there, everything just seems very seamless, um, especially when we connect these two properties together. So just to show you a before and after of how easily we were able to blend the bottom of this and fit that to the ground, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this brush looks like by itself. So if you wanted to take more of a manual approach, let's find a dark green color to use and increase the brush size. And just painting a few dabs here, you can just see what this texture looks like. So if you wanted to take that manual and custom approach, that's not a problem at all with having this brush. 
Moving on to brush number three. This one's actually gonna be very similar to kind of what we just created. Uh, we're gonna create a foliage brush. And like the grass brush, if you're dealing with a lot of landscape and trees and bushes, this brush is gonna come in handy. And because I do work with a lot of scenery like that, I use something like this quite often. All right, so with this landscape selected, we're gonna create a copy by pressing Command J. And let's turn off that bottom layer. And for this, we're gonna scale it all the way up. I only wanna use kind of the top portion of this tree here. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool and just create a selection of this top part. And we can even ignore this little sticky out bit there. And let's press Command J. So with this layer, let's center it up. And like that first brush that we had, we're gonna to go to our channels and find one of these channels that has the most amount of contrast. So this is our winner. Let's create a copy of this by dragging it to the plus sign. And then we wanna add a levels adjustment layer, increase the highlights, and then go ahead and command or control click on that layer to load a selection. And let's add a layer mask. From here, let's invert it by pressing command I. So we just have the branch. And then at this point, let's just clean it up a little bit. So we're using a brush on the layer mask and painting black to clean up some of the edges here of just the parts that you don't want. So some of these little segments that are just kind of by themselves, I'm just erasing that. I don't need it. But again, this is custom to however you want it. Have fun with it and just experiment with it. You can even go back to the tree itself and find a different branch to use and create a selection of that. I'm gonna stick with this and I want to make sure that it's completely desaturated. So with the human saturation adjustment layer, let's desaturate this. Same repeating steps, we're gonna go up to edit and then down to define brush preset, give it a name. All right, and now that we have our title, I wanna go back to our original image here. And I wanna erase the sky or select the sky to replace it. So we're gonna go all the way up to the top of our screen to select. And at select, we wanna go down to color range. Let's click on the sky and hit okay to load up a selection. From there, we wanna add a layer mask. And like before, we wanna invert that by pressing control or command I. And once we've done that, let's bring in our other cloud image to use as a background. So a brush like this, you know, it comes in handy, especially with trees when it's hard to create selections and it always has that halo. So having a tree-like texture to either paint back some a part of the tree or to erase some of the branches helps keep things very cohesive as well as just, you know, making sure that the texture is the same. All right, so let's look ahead at a different image to use. So I'm gonna load up this other scenery image and I wanna create a selection of the sky. So using the quick selection tool here, let's just create a selection of the sky and then we're gonna add a layer mask. Once we've added the layer mask, we're gonna invert it. And now we're gonna go back to our brush and you can see that we have that halo effect going on. So being able to have this brush, keep things very cohesive, like I said before, to touch this up, it just comes in handy because if you try to use a regular brush tip, it still looks really off, even from far away. So being able to keep that same texture creates such a seamless transition. And that's why, again, I think all Photoshop users should have one of these. And for brush number four, we're gonna create a texture brush. And like that second image, this one I also got really lucky finding because it's pretty desaturated as it is. So we're gonna repeat those same steps of first adding a levels adjustment layer to create that contrast between the black and white. So let's bring up our highlights. And even our shadows, we can bring them up a little bit too. And now that we have that where we want, Let's desaturate this by adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And with the saturation, let's slide that all the way to the left. And from here, we can clean up this brush a little bit. So let's go ahead and add a layer mask. As you can see right now, we have these really harsh straight edges. So if you wanna keep that, that's totally fine. I like to kind of create something a bit more organic. So I'm using just a general brush tip here and cleaning up some of the edges. Again, this is totally up to your personal preference and the look that you're going for.
All right, and this should just about do it. So once we have that, we're gonna go all the way up to edit, down to define brush preset. And again, just give it whatever title that you want. And then once you're ready, go ahead and hit okay. And I'm gonna get rid of this and let's go to our practice image that we're gonna use. Let's add a new layer on top. So you can see here on this right column, all this really cool grunge texture. On this middle column, not so much. So we're gonna manually add some of that detail on there. Let's sample one of these dark points here and we can even adjust the color if you want to or leave it the same. And let's start applying some of this texture. Play around with the opacity and the flow to whatever you like. And you can even rotate the brush. I'm using the left or right angle bracket keys. And if you hold down shift, that you know rotates it in about 15 degree increments as well. But what we're doing now is just kind of rotating it a bit, give it some variety, and add that same texture that's on the right, and give it that grungy characteristics of the column in the middle here. And we can even go back to a regular brush tip shape here and just clean up some of the areas on the edges if you want to. At this point, it's up to you. Do you want to create something a little bit darker? But just seeing this before and after, it's a nice improvement than what it originally was. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to bring in another image. And this image specifically, if you watch my Jurassic Park tutorial, this was actually the vehicle that I used for that composite. And I used a brush very similar to the one that we just created here to create a lot of the details on the vehicle. So like what I'm doing right now, after I've sampled that brown color, just creating a little bit of dirt to add onto the tires. And even on the back tire, we can add some there. And on the vehicle, it can be, it can be dirt, it can be dust, it can be rust. So this is just another one of those brushes that has so many different uses and why it makes it such a powerful brush to have. And on the layer mask, we can just clean some of this up here. And once we have that, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. So very, very little time to create just a nice bit of detail and characteristics onto the Jeep. Okay, it's time to transition to our last and final brush of the tutorial. And for this, we're gonna manually create a rain brush. So the first thing that we wanna do is let's go ahead and load up our pen tool. We're gonna create a point here. And at the very bottom, we're going to click and drag just a little bit of a curvilinear shape. And once we have that, we're gonna go back up to the top and connect it. And once that's been connected, we want to right click on this and go down to where it says make selection. Let's make sure that black is set as our foreground, and then we want to press Option, Delete, or Alt and Backspace to fill that with black. All right, so from here, you can actually, if you want to create this as a brush preset, you're more than welcome to. Um, go ahead and give it a title. But like that cloud brush, the true power of this is going to be in those brush settings. So let's go ahead and create a new layer up top here, and let's shrink this brush down using our left bracket key. And we're going to go to our brush settings and let's go first to our spacing. Let's crank this all the way up. And we can actually lower the size down just a little bit. All right, from there, we can go to our shape dynamics. And for the size jitter, let's crank this all the way up and see how that looks. Nah, it still needs some work. Let's go ahead and increase the minimum diameter just a little bit here. And once we've done that, let's go to scattering. I want to create this scatter all the way up as well. Let's take a look. All right, so we're getting closer. We're getting much closer. Let's undo that. And then we're going to go to transfer. And in transfer, same thing. I want to kind of create this kind of somewhere in the middle with the opacity. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. Let's see how this looks. All right, so I like this. I think this is looking really good and definitely something we can work with. All right, let's undo that by pressing Ctrl or Command Z. And then we're gonna go up to that hamburger menu again on the top right corner to new brush preset. And I'm just gonna call this rain underscore one. You can call it whatever you want. And then we're gonna hit okay. And let's get out of this. And we're gonna load up our main image that we're gonna use here as an example. 
All right, so with this brush that we're gonna use here, what we wanna do is we wanna sample a few of these colors in our picture. Um, let's try a different one here. Let's find something a little bit more blue. All right, this is gonna work. Let's go ahead and change up the hue just a little bit. And this is looking good, let's hit okay. And let's add some of this rain on the left side. And if we go back to our colors here, let's sample a red and use this for the middle. At the end of the day, rain is just water and all water does is just reflect the light that surrounds it. So that's why I wanna sample a few different colors here to use. I'm added more blue on the right side and I wanna find a bit more of a magenta tone to kind of work with. So let's go ahead and sample one of these sky colors here and bring that all the way up. And we're gonna use that for the background. Let's try that again. All right, that looks a little bit better. So we're actually gonna take this a step further. Once we have this set, we're gonna go to the top to filter. And from filter, we wanna go down to blur and we wanna go to motion blur. Let's keep the angle set at 90 degrees and let's change this to somewhere around 50 pixels, um, maybe 75, let's try that. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so we can lower the opacity just a little bit on here. And from here, after we turn that down a little bit, let's create a copy by pressing Command J. And with this one, we're gonna scale this up quite a bit because we can use the rain for the foreground. So somewhere right around here, I think looks pretty good. And on the original layer, uh, we can even go back, create another copy of that. And for that one, we can move it down a little bit. All right, so once we have that set, we're gonna click that top layer, shift and click the bottom. Let's group that together. And once we've added the layer mask, we can go back to a normal soft round brush tip and we can clean up some of the, the areas here just on the edges, mainly on the top. And let's create a copy of that group. And from here, we can lower the opacity a little bit and again, make some more modifications, clean up the bottom a little bit and do the same thing with the other layer. So this is looking really cool, guys. Let's group both of these together and see the before and after. And just from that brush that we created, easily add a nice and effective rain effect. And that's a wrap. So again, these are the five brushes that I think every Photoshop user should have, especially if you do a lot of work with composites and landscapes and photo manipulations. These brushes come in handy on so many different occasions. Um, I did provide the links to the images in the description below, so be sure to check those out. If you wanna go ahead and rewatch the video and follow along, I encourage you to do so. And even try experimenting with them. Maybe use different parts of the image than what I use to create these brushes. And once you have that and added those to your uh, brush collection, use them, um, create some works with them. And I would love for you to tag me on Instagram, Blended Graphics, and show me what you've created using some of those brushes. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're new, make sure to smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate all of the support. Thanks again for dropping by and watching the video. Please be sure to tune in again for our next Blended Graphics episode.